Good evening and welcome to the work session of the Penfield Town Board for Wednesday, February 9th. Um, would everyone please rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. Uh, for the record, I'd like to note that all board members are present, and we also have several directors uh, here, our Director of Developmental Services, Director of Planning and Engineering, Director of Public Works, Director of Finance, Director of Pub Penfield Community Television. Okay. All right, uh, you have the minutes from January 26, 2022 work session in front of you. Are there any concerns or questions? And if not, may I have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. All right. A motion by Councilperson Ockenden, second by Councilperson Draw. And all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. It's passed. Our monthly reports are due in by tomorrow. Um, we still have a few that are still outstanding. You know who you are. Please get those in by tomorrow so that we can have all our monthly reports in. Okay, we don't have any public hearings this evening, so we'll move right on to informational items. The first is uh, our Director of Finance, Barbara Cherto, and Director of PCTV, Dave Runner, to talk about the Penfield Community Television Grant. Correct? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Um, essentially, I just wanted to come and kind of give an update from, this was a grant that we actually received in 2021, but because it is a three-year grant it, and it started in January of 2022 and it goes through 24, I just wanted to come with, you know, get together with you guys for Marie and Candace's benefit since you weren't here last year when we um, actually received this grant. Um, so I did send you a little timeline about how it was broken down when we submitted to the senator back in July, and then we were awarded a SAM grant, which is a state and municipal facilities grant for $84,000 um, towards a PCTV um, major project, and then the town had a, a commitment as well. And as I said, that time frame is over three years. So right now we're in the process of updating our paperwork for it and getting that in. That being said, when Dave first went out last summer and you know took estimates of where we might be on costs, guess what's happened considerably since then? Costs have gone up with supply chain issues and scarcity. So um, I also sent to you um, an overview of the project and the costs, what were estimated, and I have other copies if anyone doesn't have theirs tonight, um, estimated and then what the kind of the requoted prices are for 2022 um, and what the variance is. So what the town will be covering over the next three year, three year, the three years, 22 through 24. Um, we actually have funds budgeted in, in the 2022 budget for parts of this project already. So we would be doing in 20, the anticipation in 23 and 24 is to um, budget in PCTV approximately $30,000 in 23 and in 24 towards completing this project. These were all things, and obviously Dave can speak to any of the like techie stuff. Um, these, are, these were projects that we've kind of wanted to get done for a long time, and during COVID, some things were brought to light about just getting being able to access the community, give community access better, I guess is a better way to phrase it. So when the senator awarded us this project, we were you know, pretty excited because we kind of give a list during the year and they chose this one. And um, you know, $84,000 is quite helpful from the senators. So like I said, I just wanted to come in and kind of give you an idea because it is a project that's gonna be over the next few years. So um, that, was, that was it. So hopefully I gave you enough information kind of in the narrative. Like I said, Debbie and, and Bob and Linda remember it from last year when we when that was awarded, and Tony, I know, talked to you guys about it back then as well. So, um, any questions on the money part is me. Any questions on the what all the stuff is is Dave. <laughs> so, go ahead. I was going to say, uh, ask Dave. Maybe you want to uh, uh, enlighten us in, as to what the first part of the um, the grant that you're going to be um, working on. 
so there's a number of pieces that can happen very rapidly with mm -hmm. this project, but um, this is a broad scope of many projects within the grant. So the first part of it would be to replace the um, PTZ cameras here in the auditorium, mm -hmm. first and foremost to get that taken care of. We're going to be updating our web encoders for the live web streams that will be going out and expanding the capabilities of those streams to make that more functional to the residents as well. Um, as far as outside the building, we are looking to do exterior um, all-weather PTZs for the amphitheater in Penfield Little League as well. That will allow us to cover more events more effectively and reduce staff time and costs for the overhead to bring those events to the residents. Um, in addition to that, uh, we're looking to replace an audio board that's 10 years out uh, and it's aged out, so we're looking to take care of that portion of it. And then looking at our digital media, both from our facility but also town data, uh, to have a proper storage disaster safe to put that media in in the event of a disaster where it would be off-site from this structure, um, but that will hold um, data for both our um, town network but also from our video side of things. So that will protect that going forward. Dave, one question on that, the, the equipment that you're going to need down at, uh, for Penfield Little League, is that, is that something that's going to be mobile equipment or it's something that it's going to be stationary down there? Um, the goal is to put fiber optics between this building and those two locations okay. so that we, we can bring um, both uh, video signals across it, but also utilize that for um, additional access points for Wi-Fi, but also security cameras. So by putting the fiber in, that expands the town's capabilities beyond just our video services, but to grow that out for other uh, future growth needs within those environments. Um, as far as the video stuff that we're putting in, we're looking at doing that on a seasonal basis. So it will be set up in a position outside for the season and then removed. So I guess my question is, would that be able to, that would, besides just that facility down in, down at Penfield uh, Little League, would that be able to be used up in the, um, the softball, the girls softball area as well? So as the softball project is underway and being mm -hmm. designed uh, in talking with engineering, we recommended to them to go forward and to install additional conduit in that project to that facility. So as that future gets built out, we would come back into rebudget for a second operations in that location. I think the goal for our standpoint is not to um, have all the fields televised. It's the aspect of picking two major fields for major events to be able to cover them effectively. Just given the number of ability um, for transmission, mm -hmm. we could not transmit everything out over the cable system at one time. So we will have to make some choices down the road as that goes forward. But to your point, as far as the girls softball and baseball, we'll start with the baseball side because they have an infrastructure currently in that location, knowing that construction is going to be happening in the future. That's a future build out. Fine. Thank you. Yep. Mm -hmm. Any David, I, I see there's the, a wide variance with some of the equipment and understanding that this is a three year project. Um, just trying to understand whether or not for some of the equipment is a refurbished alternative available? Have we considered? No. Okay. No. Um, if, if we were to look at a refurbished aspect, we would then look at continuing with what we currently have. We would not be looking to replace. Um, these have aged out just like a computer. There's a life expectancy to them. Um, from a manufacturing standpoint, there's a point that they no longer support them. So from a hardware standpoint, um, this particular model is 10 years plus old. So we purchased these like three years after their first development. So from our standpoint, um, if we need to get repairs, we cannot get repairs for them because yeah. the generation will change over sure. 12 years or so. I guess I'm, I'm not as concerned about the hardware just because of you know the life expectancy of those types of um, equipment, but for example, I'm just looking at the largest variance with respect to the trailer. Correct. Is that something? That I, I, we I'm currently have a trailer. We okay. currently do. It's um, 
think Eric, if I'm correct, something like 16 or 17 years, somewhere in that aspect, we outgrew it. Um, we've expanded to oh, a point it. with okay. the aspect of the weight capacity of the axle. So the, it, it is at a point that um, it no longer is a safe unit to move with equipment inside of it. And given the value of equipment that we move, we want to do that in a safe manner. Sure. So is the thought to purchase all the equipment in year one and the completion of the improvements to be year two and three? It's going to be an interesting walk on this, given the fact that we've already been told by some vendors that we are looking at a 15-month lead time. So okay. uh, we're, it, we just don't have a solid answer. We know with the cameras in here at this moment, we can do that. They're available. But by the time we go through and place that order, we don't know if they will be available. So today or if the they quoted are, price is going to go up even more, right? I'm just correct. trying to understand right. in, in terms of what's coming before the board of variances in the budget and... Pretty much anything with technology that may have a computer chip in it, there's a question mark by it. Sure. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And for our, um, for DASNY that we submit all the grant information to, we have to give them quotes, but in my letter to them, not that they don't already know it, but I actually explain that, you know, these quotes are as they are today. And, and subject to change. Right, sure. subject to change. And, you know, they're, but they're, that's what their requirement is. So as things evolve, I'll give them more updates and, you know, obviously keep the board informed as to where we are and if we need to reprioritize what we've already included. So that's kind of how we'll move forward. As Dave said, it's, it's a moving target day after day, it seems to get good pricing. <laughs> Good work. Great. Any other questions? All right. Thank you so much for the information. Welcome. Really appreciate it. Thanks yes. for letting us go first. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, we have a guest here this evening, Clark Crook from Barbell, right? Yes, so okay. this is an application for a new operator for restaurant and bar or pub known as the Bar Bill. Um, this is their first location here in Rochester. They have two other locations in the Buffalo area. Um, I believe Clark is in the audience. I'm only connecting a name with a face um, just for the, this moment. Um, so, and I do want to make one correction on the um, agenda item in references a conditional use permit. That really should say special use permit in the LaSalle's Landing District, so I do apologize for that. Um, we'll make any corrections we need to going forward. Um, they have submitted their application. Um, they're indicating no site changes um, to, the, to the property. So as you see it today, and there's mapping here for you all to see, um, I'll, um, and I'm sure most or all of us are familiar with the location. Mm -hmm. um, so they're looking for the special use to, to take over as a new operator. Um, minor, you know, any cosmetic changes inside would be really the, the nature of what they're planning on doing. Um, we'll connect them with the fire marshal in the building department in case any of the um, updates require permitting um, through those um, departments. But we thought we would introduce it, and uh, uh, Clark mentioned he'd like to be here in person so that if you had any questions, he'd be available to answer them. Mr. Cook, would you like to come up to the, sure. the table? Pardon? Yeah. It's to your level of comfort. Okay, great. And just, yes, have a seat, introduce yourself, and you can talk a little bit about this project. Sure. So you have, uh, oh, go ahead. So my name is Clark Crook. Uh, I am uh, from uh, East Aurora, New York, which is a suburb of Buffalo. Uh, uh, my wife and I did start our life together here in Rochester uh, in the 80s. I, I was an engineer for Kodak, as a few others I'm sure were, but my daughter was born at Strong. and. And we still have uh, a, a strong affection for Rochester. Uh, what is the Bar Bill? The Bar Bill is a 50-year-old uh, uh, institution uh, in, in, in Buffalo. Uh, we didn't invent the Buffalo chicken wing, but many folks believe that we perfected it. And, uh, and uh, 
Josh Allen happens to be one of those, and he's been very good to us. Uh, if you've watched uh, any Bills football or any national TV, he's constantly uh, plugging us, and uh, it's been terrific. So thank you, Josh, uh, for that. Um, we, um, what's unique about the barbell is that um, uh, we do not shake the chicken wing in a bowl. We actually paint the sauce on the wing. And what that does is it creates a consistent flavor uh, with every bite. It also keeps the wing crispy, uh, which is what we're known for. Uh, if you see on social media, and I, if you're bored after this meeting, <laughs> barbill.com, you'll see what I'm referring to. But uh, we fan out the wings, uh, five flats and five um, drums uh, in, a, in a, almost a Starship Enterprise kind of look uh, with our homemade blue cheese in the middle. Um, if it sounds like uh, we're detail-oriented, we are, uh, that, uh, that it's an art form. Uh, and uh, uh, there's a reason why uh, that we've yet to lose a chicken wing competition in the home of the chicken wing. Uh, so anyway, that's us. Uh, we're uh, extremely excited about uh, uh, the McGregor's location. Um, uh, we've been looking at sites for a number of years, and uh, uh, this site really does fit our brand. Uh, go ahead. Our other, our other locations are historic buildings, uh, which we've either rehabbed or, uh, or brought back to life. Uh, this is another example of that. Uh, and, uh, and you'll see, if you take a look at our company, that, that we do a really nice job. Now, this particular building doesn't need much. Uh, it needs some cosmetics. Uh, it needs paint and those type of things, which it will get. Uh, but uh, we're very uh, detailed when it comes to the infrastructure as well. So it will be in good hands as long as we're stewards of, of the location. So, um, well, first of all, I'm from Clarence, New York. So uh, <laughs> um, we're same neck of the woods. So you're familiar with the old Red Mill? Yes. Yes, well, we purchased that and rehabbed it. Did you? So if, if you're ever home, uh, stop in because it's alive very, again. I don't go very often, but yeah. my actually place where I was born is right around the corner from there. Excellent. So. Anyway, um, can you tell us a little bit about your business as a whole, how many employees, sure. you know, hours of operation, things like that? Sure. So uh, our, our business has certainly evolved and uh, like many restaurants have uh, through COVID. Uh, so, um, but we, uh, we currently have uh, four locations um, in total. So we have two, what we would call our Barbell brand, uh, one in East Aurora and one in Clarence. Uh, we have a, uh, a Barbell takeout, which is a standalone takeout location in East Aurora. And we also have a uh, burger bar uh, uh, in East Aurora as well. Uh, we have about 170 employees, uh, pretty close to 200. Um, we um, we are not your typical restaurant operator. Uh, we have full benefits for our employees. Um, uh, they have uh, full health insurance, dental, and uh, we also offer a 401k. Um, so we're very keen on, on our employees having an opportunity to grow with us. That is why we grow, so, so that our employees have an opportunity if they wanna stay in this business that they can become managers and, and whatnot uh, as well. Uh, the company ownership is, is family, uh, so it's my wife and my two sons, uh, Harry and John. Uh, uh, they are 33 and 28, uh, respectively. So, How many employees are you looking at for this area? It'll probably take, uh, this is a big location, so uh, it's, uh, I think, uh, 8,400 8, square feet. Uh, so, so we're really trying to figure out, um, you know, that's an awful lot of chicken wings. Uh, so so uh, we're not quite sure exactly how uh, was structured the seating, you know, in order for the, for the kitchen that's there to, to support the seating. Uh, I would imagine, uh, I think it could support, or the building, I think the McGregor's had 
over 200 seats in, in that, and I think we'll probably scale it back to somewhere around 100 and 120 ish, give or take. Uh, to answer your question specifically, it's going to take at least 80 to 90 employees. Thank you. So, I, I you know. talked a lot about takeout. Um, do you going to have takeout delivery, any of that kind of stuff? Uh, uh, unlikely. Um, that's a, a takeout's really, you know, it's a counterintuitive, but it's really taken a hit from, from COVID. Um, and um, the restaurant business uh, needs to, uh, let, let me say it this way, like all businesses, we have to maximize every employee hour we have. Uh, so, so getting the fannies in the restaurant is the most important thing that we do. Uh, um, from an overall business perspective. I can tell you the most, the biggest concern always down that area and it was when McGregor's first opened is the parking situation because so, it's, it's a tough road to, for people to access. I'm so glad you brought that up. <laughs> so, um, so the parking, the actual number of spots is terrific. It's uh, almost a hundred spots. I think it's 90 uh, 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 last count. But uh, you aren't kidding. It's uh, it's a difficult in and out, and uh, you know so it's certainly you know difficult to get the state to move on a state road. Uh, but uh, you know any advice that you can give or any lobbying that we can do as far as either calming uh, situations on that street or or uh, turning lanes or red lights or all those type of things. It's uh, um, we are a destination, uh, and and people will come from far and wide uh, to find us. Uh, and so, I don't want to sugarcoat that that it's going to be uh, 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 a popular place. Yeah. All I could say is like the K2 Brewery just down the road. They have yeah. a valet. You know, they have somebody guarding you know the parking area right. and making sure people park and and, and uh, don't park in a wrong spot, you can't park on Empire Boulevard and that kind right. of thing, you know? Right. You might think about that. Well, it's, right a, it's, a, it's a very, it's a, it's a great point. It's a great point. And it's a historic building, and I know you, did you go before? I didn't watch it, I was, I, mean, I was supposed to be at the Historic Preservation Board the other night, I did it was not, on no. Zoom, you know, because um, they didn't meet about that then. No. Because no. they need to talk about it too, on a level, I think, don't they? It's not a historic building. I mean, it's a historic building, but it's not in the historic district. It's not, no. That right. being said, <laughs> okay, it's still in the 1850s, I think, at the, the date it's yeah, been it's, around. It's, 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 oh, it's old. There's, there's no doubt. Um, and, uh, and again, that's, that's, that's why we bought it, uh, that, that it fits our brand, and our brand is, is old. So, right. so it will look and feel uh, much more hotel-y and, and inny, like it was built, uh, than it did as a McGregor's. Uh, uh, then. So you will do exterior? No exterior. No? Really? It, yeah, it won't take any, uh, any exterior. Uh, to, you know, I, just simple things like uh, rocking chairs on the porch and, you know, those type of subtle uh, but impactful uh, uh, decor, uh, you know, we'll, we'll do what we need to get done. I'm sorry, you were going to say something? I was just going to indicate, I don't think this is subject to the Historic Preservation no, no. Board's review. It's um, not. Okay, it's not. I can I double check that, but that's why we didn't have them submit anything to that, that I was board. thinking about it, though. I was thinking about it because it was, um, it's very historic. It's just never been made into a historic right. landmark for... Um, so, certainly, if there's proposed signage, that would be this board's purview, and so you'll have an opportunity to review right. signage package to make yeah. sure it's in keeping with the historic nature of the, of the building. Right. We yeah, could look for so advice from the Historic Preservation Board, but they don't have to vote on anything. If we want to look at or our yeah, town story, I don't know if they have. I'm not even ask. sure. Well, that would be up to. That may be a question for. I'm going to ask. I did, I'm sorry, I didn't hear the question. I would. I. I think she. I think um, uh, Councilperson Cole was asking if it could be referred to the Historic Preservation Board. They don't have um, decision making. Yeah, and so I don't know if that would be um, necessary. A necessary step. I mean, since they're not making any exterior changes or anything, I wouldn't think it no. would be necessary to do that. Right. Um, okay. If do you have a strong feeling? No, I don't. No. Okay. I'm just kind of throwing it out there because it's okay. one of the oldest buildings, that, yeah. one of the oldest businesses that's existing mm -hmm. continuously. Yeah. 
<clears throat> but it isn't a landmark, so it doesn't count for uh, you know historic preservation right. decision. Councilperson Lee, did you have yeah, any questions? I, I have several questions for sure. Mr. Crooks, just so we uh, optimize your time here today for sure, purposes of of the uh, review. So having reviewed your application dated January 31st, it's checked off as the application type for a conditional use permit. I think we've heard that it's a special right. use. A special I, that was use my permit. mistake. I think okay. I, in speaking with the applicant, just re made the reference to a conditional use permit. Sure. So okay. So oh, don't having, ta don't take the heat, carry. It was Jim that oh, uh, told was it me Jim? it was, yes, oh, okay. uh, told me it was conditional. I so. was willing to jump in front of the bus. Okay. <laughs> so then, having confirmed for the record that it's for a special use permit, I do want to make sure that we hit the elements of that law so that we know that the, it's satisfied for purposes of right. review and then a vote. So I understand that there's going to be some. Uh, proposed, potentially some proposed signage, is that right? So so the signage will pretty much mimic what's there uh, currently. So there are two uh, McGregor signs on, on the uh, gable ends of uh, each gable end of the building. Okay. Uh, so, uh, and then if, if Carrie can just confirm for purposes of um, the development, uh, I'm assuming that the proposed sign as it's existing is already, has already been determined that it's comports with the neighborhood, comports with the uh, standards for what's permissible in that zoned area. Yes, and that would, be, that would have been subject to the town board's review prior to McGregor's being able to put the signage up. And so I would, it would be my opinion that the past signage is consistent with the regulations and the town code and the, this board has purview or has the ability to make those kinds of decisions about whether they feel it's in keeping with the character of the structure and in the area. In LaSalle's landing, the, there's sort of a widespread of development design in this area. It spends a lot of time talking about the waterfront elements. However, this property is located across the street, isn't directly waterfront, and so there's a little bit more leeway sure. as far as what the look and feel of the buildings right. can and should be. And, and not having a lot of other existing buildings or whatnot, it doesn't create any, um, it doesn't impede any of the other businesses Correct. around, doesn't yeah, create a hazard to the public. Correct. Okay. And, and especially since this is a re, an occupancy of an existing building and there are no exterior changes, there's no additions being proposed, no changes to, I mean, minor changes just in terms of, like you said, decor, maybe plantings or hanging baskets and, and rocking chairs. So I think from that perspective, okay. there's no significant change. So there being no changes and you're satisfied that it meets all five requirements under section 250? Yes. Okay, great, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The other thing I just wanna clarify is we still have to have a public hearing about this as well. That is correct. So, so what I'd be asking for is this board's permission to prepare a resolution to set the public hearing um, so that the public can come out and talk about the proposed project and then um, this board could move forward with a future resolution after the public hearing. Right. motion for that? Yes. For, yeah. Wait a second, is there any, oh, are yeah. there any more questions for Mr. Crook? Thank you. Okay, great. So then what we will do then is set a resolution for a public hearing. We'll have the public hearing um, and then render a decision, okay? Um, Carrie will work with you in, throughout that process. Thank you. Okay. So yeah, I will entertain a motion to prepare a resolution to set a public hearing. So moved. Second. Okay, we have a motion by Councilperson Lee, second by Councilperson Cole. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Thank you very much. Thank you it was so a pleasure much. To I appreciate you. your time. Thanks. 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 <clears throat> okay, the um, action items moving on to section seven, uh, item A request to lease town owned property at 1075 Plank Road. Thank you, uh, Madam Supervisor. Um, so I've been working with Evan Shoot. Uh, this is for Shoot's Apple Farm. Uh, as part of um, their continued review, uh, continued growth of that business, um, one of the things that, uh, in speaking with Evan, they've heard, and I'm sure this board has experienced, is the concern for um, need for additional parking. So he's looking at um, the property that they own, and if you're looking at your screen, mm -hmm. um, they own the small little box, um, as well as kind of the reverse C-shaped um, piece that goes around that. 
So they're looking at expanding their parking on the east side of their building. Uh, right now, currently, the west side has the majority of their parking. Um, they've got a few little spaces in the front, but they're looking to add a gravel mm -hmm. lot on that east side. And as part of that, um, that's where currently they take the apple mash. Uh, so the, the, the byproduct of mm -hmm. creating the apple cider, um, that's one of the spots they, they deposit it there, they till it in. Obviously, it's biodegradable, uh, you know, good compost. So if he puts a parking lot there, he needs to then move it somewhere else. So in the past, we ended up owning 1075 Plank Road. So um, uh, Carrie's kind of got, it's kind of hard to see the, the indicator that's on it. Yeah. Um, the L-shaped piece uh, that she's on, we ended up owning that piece of property. Um, we have leased it out for a number of years. We've had different farmers come in and use it. Currently, Bob Moore is farming it. Um, he um, has a lease through 2024 on it um, and subsequent to uh, sending information out to the board. Um, I did have conversations with Mr. Moore. Um, he would still like to continue to farm it, um, but he is willing to work with Evan if the board is supportive of you know, him possibly putting some apple mesh on that part of it. He said the front of our property is a little bit wet. You can kind of see the dark area there. Uh, even in the aerial photo, it's holding a little bit of water. Um, so he's looking to Yep, Carrie's kind of highlighting it there. Um, he farms more of the back. Um, he said this past year he had soybeans on it. He said the, the deer ate most of it. Um, so he har harvested hardly anything off of it. So he's looking to put corn this year. Um, but he's willing to work with Evan. You know, if Evan's got apple mash, put it in there. Obviously, that's good compost. He can, you know, till that in. And so I think the two of them could work together. Um, I think the lease and the, the little bit of change on the thing, I think the lease would remain with, with Mr. Moore. Mm -hmm. um, he still has the intent to, to keep doing that. Um, you know, but would be willing to work with Evan to, you know, to allow the apple mash on that front part. And I think the two of them could work together. So it was originally a thought for, you know, releasing the property. I think now it's just if the board's supportive of, of him doing that, using that. And then obviously he's, uh, we met with him yesterday. He's getting his engineer showing where the parking lot layout goes. You know, we'll look at that and work with him to get the parking lot piece, but just making sure this board is comfortable with use of, of town on land so that that falls under this board's purview mark i'm sorry did you the additional parking is at that 1067 a is that the yeah so the kind of in that triangular piece you can see the creek cuts through there yeah. um so he's looking to be on the north side of that um so then that triangular wedge he's hoping to put a gravel lot um it'll be mostly for the fall you know harvest time people come in apple picking and everything else so he's kind of got a, a surge area he's not intending to pave it um, so the, the main lot would remain for, you know, winter, spring, um, you know, those, I'll say the more off times, you know, but the, the less used uh, times. And then as he gets into the fall harvest season and you see a, an, an uptick in, in uh, people coming to the, the property, then would have that additional overflow area that, you know, then people could go into that gravel lot there if, as needed. Maybe early to ask, but you know, will there be a curb cut for that, or is it? He has an existing curb cut, and you can kind of see right where it says the CR11 yeah. up by the. Yeah. It's yeah. an existing curb cut for the cell tower, mm -hmm. so they've got a cell tower piece in the back. Uh, thank you, Carrie. Um, so he has an existing curb cut up there now. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's not our road, so it's the county road. So whether he needs to do improvements to that um, as part of his application, he'll have to make to the county DOT work with his engineer to as for that if he's got to make modifications to it he said he may look to do a, a loop driveway so you've kind of got an in and an out um, but that's up to the, the county dot is whether they would make him do improvements to that but there is a curb cut uh, today gotcha. that thank you accesses the cell tower cell tower would remain where it is and then that triangular piece um would be on the right of the screen you know is the area that he's looking to put that that gravel on i mean i'm aware of the parking situation in autumn when it, there's just a lot of traffic right by that property um, so I can understand why you would want to do this I'm just curious about um, with the apple mash do you know about how much it is will it be tilled in he said as as possible um, you know so obviously if it's too wet you know you're sinking a piece of equipment in but um, it's there now so that's the spot he's been depositing it so mm -hmm. um, he tills it in on his own property and wood on ours you know, we said we could coordinate, you know, whether that was a little further away from the road, so maybe it's not right up next to the road. Um, and obviously coordinating with, uh, you know, Bob Moore and, you know, where it makes sense for him and to tilt it in. But obviously the fall is, you know, they're making the apple cider, so that's, you know, the peak of it. So the rest of the year it's not nearly as, as much. I can reach out and see how much material, but that's the, the spot that they deposit it now. 
And did Evan say anything about um, animals or odor with it? I mean, there is some odor. Um, he, you know, granted, he's already doing it anyway, so he's just he's moving it. So. Air, so if we're moving it 200 feet east or 300 right, feet east, you know, right. it's not a new source in the area. Okay. Um, it's there. You know, he says he does till it in as in as often as he can, and you know, would continue to do that on our property. To, you know, and again, working with uh, you know Bob Moore, if, you know, between the two of them, they can, you know, till it in. He, he says that you know, cards on the table does have some odor, but it's there now, so it's not like you're introducing. Mm -hmm. a new byproduct that wasn't there before it's been there and obviously shoots has been there sure for many many years and sure it, and he's not going to enlarge it the apple mash piece at all he, this is not an enlargement of the building this is just to serve what he's got now he came right. in a little while ago and added the piece in the back mm -hmm. um you can get in there and if you haven't been in recently you can see through the glass where they do the processing and made it more of a visible you know, element to it right. um, he's not looking to do an expansion he actually added up we worked with him a couple years ago to do parking lot across the street um, which I think was a great addition uh, with the U pick I even remember coming down Plank Road and seeing you know families little kids walking across the street with their baskets and you know just nervous tra traversing the road and you know I know what's there and I just you know, was always fearful and obviously he was too to get that element across the street so they added that parking lot on the other side so if you're doing the U pick you park over there you're on the side you can walk to the U pick and don't have the people crossing Plank Road as much any other questions for for Mr. Valentine? Okay, and then you're probably wanting to um, have a resolution for the supervisor to enter into a lease agreement. And I don't know because the the lease at this point would remain with with Bob Moore. So I think it's just if the I think FYI. we can just document it in the minutes that the board was comfortable with it. I don't yeah. know as we okay yes normally if we're entering into a new yeah. lease agreement right I spoke with Bob Bob said I'd, I'd like to keep my lease I have no problem <laughs> working with him but you know I think his runs through 2024 so he doesn't want to end his lease okay um, so I think it would just be you know if we document it in the minutes and then sure the board is comfortable with that and supportive of it and then if and when at the end of the term Bob doesn't want to anymore and Evan wants to you know obviously we'd be back before the board to Okay. Enter, enter into that lease agreement. So just for the purposes of entering it into the record and memorializing it, the board is okay and supportive of Mr. Shoot using part of that field for his apple mash. Yes. Agreed. No? No yep. objection. Okay. Great. We're all set. Thank you. Okay. Moving on to item B, signage discussion for proposed chimney sign, 1778 Penfield Road. And I'll just remind the board that this was a carryover, mm -hmm. right? So the conditional use permit was approved with the condition that the proposed light lit backlit sign on the chimney not be included in that conditional use permit approval and come back to the board for further discussion. Um, and so the applicant, and I do apologize, I'm, I'm having some technical difficulties. Hopefully you received a copy of the examples with the backlit sign signage. Um, so the, that's really the question here. Applicants ready to move forward with a sign package needs to know whether the backlit sign would be permissible and will order accordingly, or if not, would proceed with a um, non-lit sign that would be lit by the ground-mounted lighting or floodlight that's currently on the property. And so that's really where we are with this particular piece. I don't see the applicant. Um, I'm just gonna like check with PCTV just by the sound of my voice because we did present the opportunity for Zoom, zooming in. And so if PCTV confirms that the, um, Gareth, uh, the, the business owner, is not with us on Zoom. Gary, that is correct. Okay, thank you. Thank you. I'm still getting used to that. And then, um. Carrie, I have one question on that as far as that back lighting. If for some reason we find out later that this lighting is too much, I mean, it happens to be too bright into the homes that are up in, um, there's adjacent on Liberty, and if for some reason, can we come back and, and uh, address that? I'm not saying it's gonna happen, but. Yeah, so I think, um, Certainly, the, the, if the board wanted to provide a condition, I'd want to check with the town attorney to see how exactly we would word that. Um, 
you know, generally speaking, when there's a granted approval that comes with a physical improvement, mm -hmm. you don't want to have take backs, you know, like yeah. we like it, but then no, you can't, or a year later. So that can be the challenge. Um, I'd want to check with the town attorney about whether or not that, how we would structure that. So to me, it sounds like that might be a condition, some kind of a sunset clause that causes the town board to come back and look at it to make sure it's okay. And yeah, um, you, could, you could condition it for like a review after one year or six months or whatever time period you set. Yeah, so generally so. when it's, it'd be, if it was an operational issue, like hours of operation yeah. or something that isn't a physical improvement, there is going to be additional costs associated with a, a lit sign versus a non-lit sign. So if a year later, then the applicant now has to take down that sign yep. and then pay for a new sign to replace it. There is a cost there, so I think that would be something that this board would want to think about in, in moving forward with that decision. So as part of that conversation, I think the concern would be that the applicant has relied on the approval of the conditional use or whatever use permit that we grant, and it would be to his detriment of, like you said, economic costs or whatnot, and I think he would have a defensible position there. Yeah, so I think um, the applicant indicated, you know, ready to move forward in either in either direction, whether the the backlit signs approved or whether the traditional sign with the using the either way he's going to move forward with the chimney sign, um, and so really it's up to this board. I did explain that in this district, it's the historic dis district that's intended to create a village light feel. There is language in the in the code that says no back, no internally lit signs, or all lighting has to be external. Mm -hmm. However, this board does have the ability to make, um, you know, make any decision, even if you're veering away from that. So this really is a, a judgment call from all of you. Well, just speaking for myself, I mean, I'm comfortable with um, the gooseneck sign illuminating, or the gooseneck light illuminating the chimney sign. It's actually just, you know, it's ground mounted. There's like ground, a flip. That's fine too. I'm not sure I'm comfortable with a backlit sign and introducing that into the historic district. Mm -hmm. Well, that's how I feel. I, I, I like what was there, you know, it, it works, you know, what the previous um, owner of the business had. If we do something more, it could end up being something that uh, falls over into Liberty Street or the fact that it's in a historic district that we should be more cognizant of it uh, being a little mellower, a little less loud, so to speak, you know, respectful to the history. So I would, I would say, um, I would, I, I do not support the, the um, light that he the got the information from his uh, light lighting person. I would stay, stay the course of what it's been on the chimney. Anything else? No, I, I agree with all the comments that have been made. And, and looking next door, that Cameron Roofing, I'm not sure, but is that also residential? Do they yes, reside they in part of that building? That and it looks like it sticks out further than the proposed um, applicant's building. That, that backlight sign, who knows, it could cause some glare that their direction as well. Um, but I'm more comfortable with the historical um, perspective that you mentioned there. My, my whole concern was the lighting, and especially I was up there a lot uh, the other day. Mm -hmm. In the in the winter time, all those trees are down, so there's there's quite a few homes. And I'm not saying it's going to happen, and he, you know that the, the light's going to shine over there. But I would hate to have that him spend this kind of money on it and then come back later and, and be an issue. Be upset that um, and us turn around and say, like you said, that mm -hmm. sorry. You know, you it, need to keep your lit, lit sign off, type of a thing, right. and then and revert back to the ground mounted. And the, and the lights that were on there before seem fine. I'm, yeah. I'm right. And the other thing, I'm just as a staff person to the board, I would share that the concern would be if you let back if if unless you're ready, ready and willing to do channel lighting or backlit lighting across the board along Penfield Road and Five Mile. There potentially could be a precedent set so that if you allow one property owner or business to have one and then the next one comes in and you want to say no, then they point back, well, how come this person gets to have it and I don't? And so sometimes that can be the challenge. Um, just my sharing my two cents, whether that's worth or, worth or anything or not. I mean, I, if I recall what the applicant said, that it would be backlit for the hours of operation and since that it doesn't, it doesn't violate quiet hours or 
it seemed reasonable business hours, I would not be opposed. Okay, um, so what I'm sensing is it's about four people opposing a, a, an internally lit sign and one person okay with it. How would you like to proceed? So I know that the business owner is, is anxious to order signs. Okay. So if this, I would just need a, a vote okay. this yeah. evening if it's okay. Sure. Not a problem. So we would be basically, um, I would need a motion to deny a an illuminated, self-illuminated sign. Or you could approve the non-lit, the unlit. The, oh, okay. The, we could do it that way. Because he did propose both. Right. That's the, perfect. The, the original package included the, uh, and the signage on mounted on the chimney yep. that would be using right. the ground-mounted lighting. But and then we, it was. Do we have to approve the whole sign package again? No, no, just, just this one, sign. just the chimney sign. I would prefer to do an approval of, uh, you know, motion to approve. It, yeah, it and it's actually so it would be the a motion to approve the originally submitted chimney sign, utilizing the existing ground mounted lighting. Right. I'll make a motion that we do that. The I'll original. That. All right. Motion by Councilperson Draw, second by Councilperson <laughs> Cole. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? I don't oppose as uh, moved. Okay. So good. So we're good. Thanks, Carrie. Are you comfortable with it? I'm good to go if you okay. are. We are. All right. Conditional use permit application for 2129 Five Mile Line Road. Excellent. Um, as you'll recall, this was an application that we first introduced as a potential sign approval for a customary home occupation. In review of that, um, the details, we realized that really this rose to the level of being a conditional use permit because it's more of a mixed mm -hmm. residence with business. Um, this board um, tabled that, uh, that action item at the last workshop, or excuse me, work session requesting that the um, the signage be reviewed by the Historic Preservation Board. That took place last week. Um, I do apologize. Um, Shannon um, had the audacity to go and uh, be out of the office <laughs> immediately following that meeting and is not is slated to return until tomorrow. So um, I did share with the board um, a clip of the, of the meeting itself and the vote that took place. The board did vote to issue the certificate of appropriateness for the proposed sign as presented. And so now I'd be asking um, this board to um, have me prepare a resolution setting the um, public hearing for the conditional use permit. Um, if you want to move in that direction, or I think if we want to talk about um, the, the potential for this to be reviewed and approved administratively. Um, this is a, a, a building that's been historically used for a mix of offices, um, it, so it's not a significant change to how the building is being used. Um, and it's consistent with how the board has acted administratively, providing a, approval without public hearing for similar types of exchange of, of occupants um, when there's not a, a major change. So that would be my request if, if this board would contemplate that application and, and potentially I think, I think that's a good idea. That's Normally that's what we would have done anyway. It was just we had a question about the signage and wanting the Historic Preservation Board to take a look at it. Yep. I mean, I have no problem with that either and okay. would help things move along. Yes. Mm -hmm. So any other questions for Ms. Ivers? Mm -hmm. All right, then I'd entertain a motion to grant a conditional use permit for 2129 Five Mile Line Road. So moved. Second. Mm -hmm. I have a motion by Councilperson Cole, second by Councilperson Ockenden. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. And then you'll follow up with the owners. I will, and we'll prepare the conditional use permit um, with um, the clerk's office. Thank you very much. And moving on to item D, conditional use permit application for 2135 Five Mile Line Road. 
Uh, thank you. So this is an application from, that's being made by Acadia CBD, currently located across the street at 2118 Five Mile Line Road. There is a vacancy in the, in the plaza and they would like to move uh, their operation over to this location. Um, the, uh, and I do apologize, you do have a permit application. Mm -hmm. The supporting documents, the, um, the applicants were having some technical challenges and couldn't get me the, um, some of the, the requirements electronically and we're working on that. So I've advised them that the public hearing really shouldn't be set until we have that information in hand. Um, and so I would, I'm, they are gonna be looking for a, um, this would be subject to a public hearing. This is a relocation, physical, um, a new type of occupancy in that plaza. My understanding is they would be taking over the space formerly occupied by the flower barn, mm -hmm. if I'm not mistaken. That and was, so that was Julie's, Julie's fine fashions. Oh, yes. forgive me. Yes. yes, I'm sorry. I'm not trying to put somebody out of business. I do apologize. Yes. <laughs> that would be really bad of me in the first yep. couple months of being the director of developmental services. It doesn't look good on the resume. No, it doesn't. No, exactly. Um, so the one, of, I mean, in terms of, in the interest of moving forward, if we wanted, if the board was amenable to setting a public hearing date, we could do that, but only once we have complete application in hand. Um, we, we don't have that at this time. I mean, I think we'd have to table this. You want to, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. We can do that. And I'll let the applicant know that it was tabled because and we didn't have a complete application in front of us. I think that's only appropriate. I yep. mean, I understand that, you know, they could submit it, but let's just be consistent. Okay. Okay. So may I have a motion to table item D, conditional use permit application for 2135 five mile line. I'll move that, we table it. Okay. Second. Motion by Councilperson Draw, second by Councilperson Ockenden. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Item E. This is um, 2105 Five Mile Line Road. Um, this is a, an expansion of a conditional use permit that has been previously granted. Um, this is um, a four unit um, apartment uh, occupancy. I'm gonna, it's not really a development, but the building is comprised of four um, apartment units. The upper north unit, there is some undeveloped space adjacent to the apartment. They're looking to add um, a, a bedroom. The the um, there's very it's mostly an interior change. The one change they have to make is an exterior. Um, one of the windows would need to be um, replaced so that it met the um, egress requirements in the in the building code. So the applicant is um, working with a uh, window manufacturer to provide that, um, that the, the window um, specs and details. Um, I can provide that to you. There were some questions from the applicant with respect to what was gonna be acceptable. Um, I think this is another one that could be, once we would be maybe potentially, doesn't require a public hearing per se. Um, well, okay, so. It's in the district. Jeff. It's in the Historic Preservation District. Mm -hmm. Gotta go to them. And there is a window that they're considering Replacing, right. I'll have to confer with Shannon. My understanding is she reviewed it and some, somewhere, somebody thought this may not need to go to the Historic Preservation Board. I wanna confer with her. And unfortunately, I'm not able to do that until she sure. returns. No, no, understood. It does. If it's in the Historic District and, and the Historic Board does look at windows. Right. Of historic buildings. In the yeah, so I'll or have to start buildings. It's like, you know, I have to conf I'll confer with her and we'll verify that process. And if th that is in fact the case, we'll make sure they're on the next available historic preservation uh, board meeting agenda. Now, do we want to go forth and set a hearing? I was saying this one probably doesn't rise to the level of requiring a hearing if the historic preservation board, uh, but that's up to you. This is up to you. Um, it's an interior renovation. Yeah. They're not putting an addition on. They're right. adding, they're building out. There's a, available sort of upper floor space. I don't have an issue with that. It's just that they're, the exterior is, is going to look different because of the egress window. I'm, so I'm gonna defer to our liaison to the Historic Preservation Board. Okay. <laughs> I, I, would, I would table it and send it over to Historic Preservation Board too. Okay. I think it, I think it yes. would be their decision. I think it would be. It's I, the former layers yes, study. I think it will be their decision. Yes. yes. Okay. I'm sure they'll want to review that building because we were talking about that building. Yeah, um, 
a while a while back about removing the I don't know, Mr. Valentine. I'm gonna I'm gonna question you if you know that. Remember the um, the post out in front. The there was question about that. The hitching posts that they wanted to move, but then they didn't need to move. Oh, that's news to me. I know. Oh, okay, I've, back in the. I've dealt with the retaining wall, and I've been inside the building. They were doing some. Okay. Some drainage work, but, but I wasn't involved it, with the so. hitching post part but, of it. Okay. I did did go before the board. I moved that we table us. Sorry, Mark. I didn't mean. To. <laughs> May I have a second? Second. Okay. Just before we take a vote, I just want to apologize, Carrie. I did not realize that they were changing the egress window, and that I think to me does change something. So I apologize for not noticing that when we set the agenda. No, nope, that's okay. that's okay. That's okay. fine. And I'll have um, more information as to what the the window. I can certainly provide. And in the application, they showed what the exterior looks like now. Um, as soon as I receive, and, and yeah. I'll. I don't think I've received anything yet. The a proposed spec of the new window. Uh, an even that. better reason to table it. I just, I want to be very respectful of the process and the role that the Historic Preservation Board plays. Okay. Okay. So all in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Thanks for understanding, Carrie. Oh, no. That's an absolutely. Uh, request for rezoning 1271 Fairport, five mile line, nine mile line road from RA2 to R120. So this is um, Welch's Market, the uh, Vendel property. Um, they, are, I think you carry brought it up, uh, so directly to the south of the Abington development. Um, as part of Abington, this board, um, that was an incentive zoning project way back uh, when, they looked at the abutting to this property and what the impact would be. Uh, part of that review incorporated a stub road to this property as well as stubbing utilities to this piece. Um, so the intent or the understanding was that at some point this uh, property would develop. Uh, they have come to the Comprehensive Plan Committee. The comp uh, <coughs> Comprehensive Plan Committee um, reviewed it, is supportive of, of the, uh, the change. Um, as part of our site tours, we did go out, look at the property, drove through it. Um, you know, looked at at that point in time. So uh, just looking this evening as we had, uh, this board had uh, taken action to uh, look at or set a public hearing for the rezoning of the Smith property. So just south of, of this little bit along 250, uh, the Northrop area, thought it may be good timing to um, have these two hearings on the same night since they're both along 250, kind of in that buffer to, you know, the East Penfield area. Um, and I don't recall the date, I think it was either uh, April Sixteenth, I think we were looking to set the date for the the, the Smith hearing. Um, so just looking if the board uh, was supportive of setting a hearing date for that is uh, time on the same night might make sense to, to do those not together. They stand alone, but you know have them on the same evening. If there was people that had concerns or issues, I think you'd have this you know the same residents with similar thoughts. Are there any questions for Mr. Valentine? No, sounds fair. Okay. Seeing none, um, I would entertain a motion for a uh, to, for a resolution to for a hearing to consider the request of rezoning of 1271 Fairport Nine Mile Point Road in an appropriate time as determined by the director. So, so moved. Second. That's fine. Motion by Councilperson Ockenden, second by Councilperson Draw. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Item G. Um, so the next one is um, the 2022 CDBG, which is the Community Development Block Grant. And I sent along some pictures and I'll give the board a little bit of a background on this. Um, so in the back of Linden Avenue, uh, the manufactured home park, we have a sewer that is elevated off the ground. So as it goes between valleys, uh, there's actually trestles holding the sewer up in the air. Um, Eric and I looked at it uh, last year. It's been in, in place, and thank you, Carrie, for bringing up the picture. So you can see it uh, is elevated off the ground. Um, it does have some concrete abutments on the end um, with some protectant to keep people from crossing it. Um, but this was installed in the early 60s. So in the past year, Eric and his team have uh, worked with uh, some tree removal specialists to go out there, take the trees down that are around it. Uh, we had concerns if obviously ash borer or any of the other, the tree died. If the tree fell over, it would sever a 12-inch diameter pipe, and then obviously we have 
sewage you know within the valley uh, so his group went in uh, worked with the tree service took the trees down so now as part of that um, in these community development block grants uh, there's two different areas this qualifies as one we can get some funding for infrastructure type items so we're looking to put forth and uh, the grant uh, application is due next week is to go in and one shore up the bottom and if you have the second picture it shows um, at the and I have several others if there's there's more interest at the bottom of the one of the footers you can see it's starting to, the steel is starting to spall down there so the structure itself looks good um, but at the bottom you're starting to see some spalling of the of the steel we're proposing to put in um, additional concrete around those bases so to form around that pour that in so you encase the steel in the bottom support that structure as well as uh, slip line that pipe so knowing that it's older up above it appears to be functional today but while it's still uh, in good condition go through and slip line that pipe um, we'd have to you know put that out to to bid uh, and there's another view as soon as you're walking up the valley you can see the pipe that's you know up and above it's about 60 plus feet off the ground um, but they would work from one end to the other to you know put the slip line in we'd have to do some bypass piping keep it because it is an active sewer um, mm -hmm. you know keep it active while while they're doing that work complete that and then hopefully between doing the support of the bases as well as doing the the slip line into the pipe hopefully get another 60 years out of this and you know extend the life of it background of it so as part of the um, the, the grant application is doing this is a is a secret process so since this is maintenance staff has deemed this we've looked at it as a type 2 action so being maintenance just want to make sure the board is supportive of that determination of it being a maintenance project supportive of the type and is a type 2 action we need a resolute reading uh, confirmation from the board that you're good with that and then we can include that with our grant application so so I'll, how much do you estimate the cost to be um, we're still working on that so Eric uh, just provided me information tonight um, so he's been working with Kenyan pipeline um, they're looking at just doing the slip line part is is upwards of twenty thousand um, dollars looking at doing the supporting of the base um, getting access to it we'll need a pump or truck um, like we need a you know a crane to get down in there you're probably at least another 20 plus thousand plus any other bypass pumping and everything else so we're probably 50 60 thousand um, we're finalizing the grant to put that forward um, but that's a good number I mean we got um, I think we got almost 90,000 last year on the grant application for the courtshire pipe replacement we talked about two weeks ago uh, doing that replacement so um, I think you know this to me obviously the, the grant uh, group would need to review it and see if it made sense mm -hmm. um, but I think you know doing infrastructure um, you know in these areas and supporting existing infrastructure and, and doing improvements um, you know would be beneficial so we're finalizing our numbers um, our applications due the end of next week but had the opportunity to get in before the board get the board to you know agree with that secret determination we can include that um, you know with our application we had to um, send a letter off to SHPO um, show you know they look and see if are we impacting anything that could be historic if there's you know any Native American elements relics in the area but again we're not doing any soil disturbance so we quickly got a letter back from them saying no we're good you're not going to be digging in the ground this is all elevated mm -hmm. any other work. questions for the director mark is that the only section that's elevated around the parks yes okay yeah that's the only piece that it just kind of goes from one valley to the next valley and they didn't fill the valley in which was good I mean it's, right. it's environmental but it's just kind of surprising that it's there I'd never seen it I'd heard of it never seen it before last summer I went for a hike and yeah. went up the valley and kind of pick not this valley neck that valley and you walk up and then all of a sudden you see it in the air and go okay that's yeah. that's something unique so <laughs> I, I have a question in asking sure. you that mark I mean I'm not an engineer I don't know anything about it seems like if you that this is how we have to do do things but isn't is there ever another opportunity I mean that to do something different I mean do we have to do it like that I mean it, just because it's been done that way is that the best way or do you I mean, it's, efficient way? I mean you, you would probably if we did it today we'd run it because the inter county interceptors down there now mm -hmm. before it wasn't there um, before it went to a treatment plant that was in Brighton so just over the line so if you go to the Linden Tech neighborhood we own uh, we don't know it's in Penfield there's there's a portion of it uh, the paychex is in just over the line in Brighton there's a sewer treatment plant there so they were going that way now we would go down the hill the interceptors on the other side of uh, Allen's Creek 
so we would run it that way, but to divert it would be, you know, run it a different direction. Yeah. Cut this off would, would be a lot larger than a fifty to sixty thousand dollar project that you know hopefully and, we can get funded. And, and if you were going to divert it, you would likely need to install a pump station to be able to actually force the the sewage. <laughs> you, you wouldn't. It, it'd be extremely difficult to maintain grade, uh, let alone ever get to the sewer for maintenance. Uh, you, you'd never be able to, aside from backpacking and hiking in, uh, to get to it in the event of a backup. You would have to have a pump station and a force main. Um, rather than having being a gravity sewer with manholes that you can access from in between there and wherever it ties in downstream. Gotcha. Fair yeah, enough. Thank a, you. It's, it's in a remote location. I mean, either you have to hike in from the back of Allen's Creek Valley, and I've I've hiked in from the bottom. Where you know, Eric and his group, I mean, they talked about having a repelling team go down from the top. Um, you know, at one point in time, just due to the grade, to you know, when when they did the there. tree work, they actually had. Um, the contractor had, or the tree company had an employee uh, suspended and tied off to a crane reaching out into the valley to get to the trees. Oh my goodness. So fortunately this is the only one of its kind that we have within the town. We do have other sewers that are, you know, hanging or suspended off of uh, some of our, you know, the one bridge that we own uh, down in front of Glendevere's on Old Pinefield, or um, Old Browncroft Road, oh. uh, but this is the only the, the only trestle bridge sewer that we have. So we want to make, make sure that we, we don't have any issues with it and that we're protecting it for the future. I trust you guys. <laughs> <laughs> so it looks like you're just looking so for the only seeker motion. For the board tonight is the seeker action. Okay. You know, if we get the grant, you know, we'll have to go ahead with design plans and we'll come back and brief this board. But right now we're just looking for some assistance with funding. So if the board's, you know, supportive of that, you know, typing of that. Sure. Seeker. Then may I have a motion to uh, determine this is a type two action pursuant to Seeker, uh, requiring no further review, I believe. Yep. Sure, I'll make that motion. Okay. Second. All right. Motion by Councilperson Draw, second by Councilperson Cole. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. H, Shadow Pines conceptual plan and next steps. So this, and, and Carrie's, yeah, you can share that. Um, so we had come uh, before the board uh, just before the end of the year uh, to kind of come to a, a concurrence on the, the layout, the design of the plan. Um, I know we've had some additional input. So we're just back before the board this evening to make sure the board is comfortable with what, um, what's been proposed. Um, as far as the layout, uh, the parking, uh, so then we can go to the next steps of, uh, we've been working with the BME group uh, to do the design plans. They're getting ready, if we're comfortable, send it to the DOT, send it to the health department, send it to the water authority. And then we also need to talk at some point about, you know, what phases do we want to build it in so then we, they can start, you know, working on construction docks and everything else. So. Um, you know, first and foremost, you know, are we comfortable with the layout, the design of it, location of, of where it is, and then if we are, we can, you know, have them release it to the, those agencies. The county DOT is going to weigh in on it. They'll have their, their puts and takes. Um, the water authority will send it off to them, and uh, as part of this, we're proposing a private hydrant internally based on how and where, if there's a backside tap required, um, technical term of how you're going to connect to the water main, we may need an easement from Dolomite on the other side. I've reached out to Dolomite. They said they're amenable to it. Obviously, they'd want to see meets and bounds, you know, easement description if and when it's needed. Um, but just reached out to them, make sure that you know they were open to it. Um, you know, they said they, you know, they were fine and you know were supportive of that. Um, you know, but then as I said, you know, look at you know what phases to build it out, and this is a uh, an overall plan showing bathroom, shelters, courts. Playground, you know, and we've gotten some questions on the different elements. I mean, it shows playground. Obviously, there's future need design for that. You know, how is it fenced? How is it laid out? Um, you know, but this is kind of an overall master plan. And then, you know, at what point do we want to start implementing those? You know, what portions go first? How do you, you know, how do you want to approach it? I think to start out with, because I'm new and Miss um, Lee is new. Um, 
Do you want to talk a little bit about what changes have been put in place since the board last saw that? Um, most of the work, um, and they have not added the 16th court yet, so I just wanted to highlight that for the board. Um, most of the changes they've been working on is more on the technical end of it. Um, I think I sent along the utility plan, so they've been working on um, doing the grading plans, doing the utility work, um, and I've got those if, um, I think I've shared those, but we've also got um, lighting plans. So they've been working on more of the detail around the submittal of those, how the stormwater pond works. They provided us uh, the calcs that we need to review to go through, you know, how the hydrology works in the pond. Um, they've done landscaping. We've sent that off to uh, our consultant, Bruce Retsky, is the consultant for the town. He's, he's reviewing that um, as we speak. Um, so physically, the overall layout has not really changed. Um, I know we had gotten comments um, from somebody saying that um, in order to hold national tournaments, you need 16 courts. This current plan is showing 15 courts. Um, so that's one of the items to talk about with the board tonight. If you want to add a 16th court, I think they can add it on to that last end and, and make that 16 if that's um, you know the, the board's desire. But I think um, you know BME is just looking final direction of, of where we're going. They can finalize the plan. Um, you know, and then send it off to those agencies at least. Um, it is a county road, so they'll have to get approval for the two curb cuts. Um, so I think they've done some updates and shown, you know, where the curb cuts are along um, uh, Wayland Road in that area. As I said, they've worked on the pond design, they've worked on the landscape design. You know, they've done some more of the, you know, the technical elements and carries brought up showing the, the court, and I believe that'd be the, the, the most logical sense is to add the, the 16th court on that end. Obviously, that would adjust, you know, where they show the, the pathways around it. Um, but again, as we look at phasing, bringing the utilities into the site, bringing the curb cuts off the road or kind of the first need to do, um, you know, so you're not, you know, digging that stuff back up, establishing the parking lot, you know, but then from there, you know, what elements go in first? What do you want to do? You know, second is, you know, is pickleballs the first, you know, we can, you know, put that in phase one to, you know, look and put in the courts and then see, you know, as money, you know, allows walkways, bathrooms, you know, I don't believe all of this is a day one, you know, ribbon cutting element, but, you know, over multiple years, but that's what it was intended. And they say that's why some of the areas just say future hard court area mm -hmm. based on once it's installed, the use, you know, working with rec, public demand. Those could be more pickleball courts. They could mm -hmm. be basketball. Court. I mean, they can be right. anything. So they just kind of show that it's an allocated area for it. Um, you know, but obviously, you know, based on, you know, resident demand that can change, you know, there's areas for a tot lot. There's areas for, you know, a playground. Again, those all need to be final design, but they're just kind of showing and allocating how those, those elements would fit into this design. And then from the, you know, from BME providing planning level cost analysis <clears throat> essentially is going to be sort of broken down to a level where it becomes, feels a little bit more like, a little bit like a menu. So you can decide mm -hmm. perhaps based on cost of items, what can and should be included in phase one, phase two, what makes sense to combine, you know, where do you, where do you, um, achieve, you know, some efficiencies by grouping certain improvements together. Um, in terms of, you know, mobilizing equipment and things like that. So I think to Mark's point, the underground, it makes sense to do all the underground work all at once. If we know where everything is going to be, that's the time to do it before anything is built on top of it. And we can ask BME to kind of, you know, break that down. So I said you can look at, right. or as Carrie had said, you can look at the menu. Um, you know, some of the ones you got to, you know, get the curb cuts in and out, establish yep. the parking lot once you establish that. We've got to do the pond to handle the stormwater runoff. So some of those base elements kind of come and then, you know, you can look at an a la carte of what the other elements are. And then I know we're working with some different groups that may or you know, may not have some additional funding to provide to, you know, certain elements of as the pieces come along. So if well, the for instance, the bathrooms, the, the restrooms. Yeah, I mean, if we got that all a, set to go, the, the utilities underneath, so you know where yeah, it's going to be. It's there in a yep. stub, so we don't have to yeah. dig the parking lot up. So we at least get it there, get it roughed out to that location. And then if and when either we got a grant for a bathroom or, you know, that came up as a capital improvement project, yeah. bathrooms, you know, went in, you know, you could look at kind of piecing it in, but that's you know, why we've got the overall design. Um, but I think if the board's comfortable with the overall layout, um, whether you want to add the 16th yeah. court, we can have BME do that and then they can get it off to the, the other agencies. We'll get yes. feedback from those groups. And at the same time, we can ask them for, you know, start a cost, um, 
break down, you know, look at maybe what some logical phases might be and then come back to the board and say, okay, you know, here's the feedback we got from those other agencies, the changes we need to make, and then here's kind of the, right. the cost breakdown and then the board can make right. some. Right, it all makes sense. And I would add that 16th just so you have that. You don't want to have, all of a sudden decide you want it and it's already utilities are planned in it or something. Right. You make sure you have. The one thing too is that we talked about, um, it's not really shown on this, but <clears throat> that this proposed pavilion would have some storage capacity there too. So there'd be a portion of it that could be used to help service and store supplies right and for the board's knowledge mm -hmm. we did communicate with some people from the pickleball association some people from um disc golf, disc golf mm -hmm. and got their feedback mm -hmm. so that went into that um i'm in favor of adding a 16th court because i think it's important you know if we're going to build this um mm -hmm. that we have it available mm -hmm. for possible tournaments that would be a benefit to not just, you know, the town of Penfield, but, you know, the larger community. Um, and I think we should plan for that. And they are in high demand. Yes. What's in high demand? Uh, pickleball, pickleball courts. That's a, it's a, it is all the rage. Right. What, do we have an estimated cost for adding the 16th court? Um, we don't as of yet, no. Okay. We would ask them for an overall estimate of what it is. Oh, with an a la carte option. Okay. Yeah. Right. Okay. Um, would you like us to have a formal vote on this or just a general go ahead? I, uh, I don't need a, a resolution. You know, yeah. I just want to make sure, obviously, every time we go back to an engineering firm, you know, it's just more cost. So I just want to make sure we're affirmed with, you know, this is the board's desires. Um, I'll ask them to, you know, to add that in and then go ahead with the submission to the agencies and then start that cost. Right. I mean, I think it's important to get going on this project. So, okay. you know, I'm in favor of moving forward. How is everyone else? Yes. Agreed. Okay. Yes. Okay. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I, Penfield Veterans Memorial Park softball field expansion. And I think this is at a, um, I would say a similar uh, spot. Um, we've done some, again, general layouts on the site. You know, this is uh, kind of relatively conceptual at this point, um, but want to get the board's take on it. Um, make sure you're, again, you're supportive of the layout, supportive of, you know, the elements that are shown. Uh, so Carrie's bringing up the property. This is the campus we're sitting on today. So Columbus Crossing is running north-south through the middle of uh, the map. The existing uh, two softball fields, you can kind of see the, the skinned infield. Um, and then we're looking at adding a third uh, softball field on the backside. And that would require some relocation of the existing asphalt path that's out there. Um, also looking at an expansion of the parking area that's out there right now with a second means of egress in and out of of that lot as we've seen i think people are a little scared of getting trapped in that lot so we've seen more people park along the road than actually in the parking mm -hmm. lot so we're trying to you know provide more parking to get them in mm -hmm. um, as well as um, we're looking to install sidewalks along the road so that was in the 2021 budget so once we put sidewalks in we don't want people parking on top of the sidewalks so we need to give them a, a spot to park um, we've also um, shown a, a conceptual uh, location uh, for a bathroom mm -hmm. um, we would need to get into final you know design of, of where that goes um, some grading with it so let's see this one's a little bit more of a conceptual layout right now um, but just wanted to know see the board's comfort level we did some internal cost estimates you ready to uh, yeah you can bring, bring those up, up. Um, so we did some internal cost estimates um, some of the stuff the sanitary sewer uh, the water the rpz um, and then an e1 unit um, that's the, the pump that would pump from the bathroom into the, the sanitary sewer um, we're very close uh, in grade we installed that sanitary sewer uh, most recently out of the town hall was on septic for years um, we installed the sewer going along columbus cross and you can probably still feel the little bump in the road where they they cut across and installed that in um, we've allocated for a pump if needed, mm -hmm. um, depending on final grade shots and everything else, you know, it may be enough that it could go gravity. Um, we also then 
Uh, the next elements get into the grading, um, erosion control measures, you know, as needed. Um, you know, installing the, the softball field and, and the, the elements that are there. Um, and then in the next item talks about the, the sidewalk, you know, that we're looking to put in, um, relocation or adjustment of the asphalt path, uh, striping of a crosswalk uh, for at the end of Columbus Crossing, um, adding in uh, the gravel parking lot, um, and then some bollard protection, you know, to make sure um, you know, that, that sidewalk in, in some of those areas are protected. Um, getting down into the landscaping, um, if we relocate or add that third softball field, we will impact some trees on that corner of our property, um, as well as putting in that asphalt path. Uh, so we're proposing to put in some buffering trees back to uh, the neighbor at that corner, since that would you know, thin that piece out. And then we've put in a number for um, a restroom, and this is, I think, the, the cost with some escalation of what we had most recently at Rothfuss Park. And as we all know, you know, costs have increased, so I think we need to, you know, check that number um, on that. Um, we did get updated um, work with uh, Eric and his team, and um, Tim Masterton and the Parks Department got us numbers for the softball field fencing. Mm -hmm. So currently the two existing fields do not have an outfield. Um, fenced on it, so we'd look to add that one so the fields can work closer together. So we have a 200 foot uh, distance on those and fence those, as well as um, you know, install you know, dugouts and new fencing for the new field. Um, so, all told, our, our estimated amount is um, just over half a million, so we're about 560,000. So, again, on this one, what's the board's comfort level with the layout and what's there? Um, if you're supportive of what we're showing, we need to then take it to the next level. We need to start looking at grading, utilities that go into there, you know, the layout of the, the softball field, and, and then as well as, you know, looking at a bathroom design, and then I think also looking at, you know, a phased approach, um, obviously installing the field, the parking lot, some of the other elements, you know, is cheaper than, you know, a bathroom element, but um, obviously bathrooms are important as well, but just as we're in the board, obviously needs to look at the economics of this as well as, you know, we just approved fields at Rothfuss as well as, you know, pickleball and all those. So just making sure, you know, it all fits in the budget. And right. Didn't we receive a grant, though, to help offset costs for, was it the restroom? Um, we may have. I think I we did we or did we ask? We asked I, I believe we we applied. I don't yeah, know that yeah. we've gotten a decision. Yes. Yeah. Okay. From one of our state representatives. Um, I mean, if we did, I, I'm I'm unaware, but obviously that's uh, always maybe a great it wasn't help and formal. Yeah. We submitted for it, and you know, as part of that. And yeah. <clears throat> okay. Can you clarify? I'm looking at construction cost one, construction cost two, uh, on the map, which it refers to. Bear with me. This is the um, for the sewer. So this is if you don't need the pump, correct? Yes. So we, I mean, we can separate those costs out, but that's basically whether we've got it. Um, we can get there by gravity. Um, so we've got to go out and do some some shots in the field. We've we know the depth of the pipe. We don't know exactly where the final location of the bathroom is. You know, if that's the location, we had initially just kind of showed it on the south side of the road. Um, I think Councilman. Uh, I could recommend it on the north side of the road, um, which is fine. It, it drops down a little bit in grades. So we got to make sure we can get gravity sewer out of that. So obviously, gravity is cheaper. You know, if you can go that way, if we've got to put a pump in, now we've got to, you know, we'll have electric to the building already. Um, but there's a little bit more infrastructure. So that was the, the differentiation was um, the first one is a six inch gravity sanitary lateral. Um, the second is a, you know, a, a, you still need the lateral, but then you've got to add a pump add on to that cost if, if we can't get there by gravity and we've got to pump up to the sanitary sewer. So these costs are then mutually exclusive? Um, I believe the number two is in, yes, they are mutually exclusive, thank you. Uh, I just wanted to update you that it looks like there was a DASNY grant for $205,000 okay. and it is not fully executed yet but we but it's in the final stages of approval. Okay. 
So we're We'll loop that into our yeah. Is for the bath specifically for a bathroom? Specifically for the the restroom. restroom. Okay, great. It was two hundred and five six fifty. Okay. Okay. So I guess if you're looking for guidance from the board as to which to send to bid, I don't know if we have sufficient information based on at least what's been no we need to do more final design okay. you know for the board but at this point it's kind of a, a conceptual design and layout okay. if the board says yes we want to move ahead with the bathrooms yes we want to move ahead with the ball fields yes we want to move ahead with with all of those yes. elements <laughs> okay. we need to go out there and do some survey work we need to you know come back to, no we need to come back to you with more information we need to pick up the elevations yep get I a, do. a bathroom design together all that and then come back to the board and say okay now that we've designed it here's our more definitive numbers we need to then you know come up with a bid docs plans um, you know in order to go out to bid sure without knowing the scale of the drawings I would have concerns as to the middle proposed middle field and I believe that one in the softball people may speak better to that but I believe that is to be used as like a practice warm-up field um, so I think the other ones would have an outfield um, currently they don't but we'd add fencing as an outfield on those there thank you Carrie so there we'd add an outfield fence on that so it'd, you know protect the overflow of that okay. or any fly balls wouldn't roll out and I believe the third field um, would be kind of a warm-up field um, people could use for pitching and other elements um, to get the you know the girls warmed up and then they'd go in and then the others would be the the game fields I know we have some reps from Petfield Little League so would you like to come up to the to the desk to the makeshift days thank you you're very welcome just to introduce yourself my name is Dan Watson. I am the Vice President of Softball Operations for Penfield Little League. I've held that role for the last six years. Okay. So as I recall, um, the former Supervisor LaFountain had a meeting with Penfield Little League, and I believe Eric and Mark were there as well, maybe in September or late August, about this layout. Do you want to comment further about it? I wasn't involved in that meeting, so I'm not privy to the details of it. Um, what I can speak to the layout there, um, it, it, from a Penfield Little League perspective, if we're talking about priority, it's the existing fields and fences around that. You know, mm -hmm. I don't think you need to look any further than going down that side of the hill and looking at the quality of those ball fields and coming on this side of the field and looking at the quality of these ball fields. And the primary difference is a fence. And it, it will add to I think the appeal is people drive in off this Jackson Road entrance all the time to come to this building, to come to the baseball side. It, it looks like two dirt patches sitting out there in the middle of an open field right now. It doesn't feel like it's a softball complex. Um, the third field, we've had conversations um, within Penfield Little League of, is the fence required? I, I haven't seen it laid out exactly like this. Um, I'll be honest, looking at this, I do share some concerns. There are not a lot of ball games that happen on senior field, that field off to the, to the right, the baseball field, that one. Um, fly balls, foul balls come often, so I could, coming back over their backstop, which would land in um, left field over there on that proposed third field. Um, I would not worry about balls traveling from the softball fields into it. So if if the goal is indeed to make it be a practice field, I, I could go so far as to say to get a project moving, we can move it up. Don't put a fence around it. If it is indeed just going to be used for pitching infield, some outfield as a practice field, it might not need that 200 foot fence. And if I'm looking at the budget correctly, 500, roughly 530,000, if 200 of it was covered by a grant, 150 was the third ball field. We can cut 350 right off of that cost, and I think it gets to a more palatable price that could be done sooner. Um, I'm just really curious to hear from from Kelly Aiken and Dan Aiken are in the audience, and I know that they've also spearheaded this effort. So, would you mind coming up and just sharing your thoughts? Sure. And thank you, Dan, for your. For your Absolutely. 
Good evening, everybody. I'm Kelly Aiken. Um, yes, I essentially, when we started this um, conversation about the fields, um, it's because the girls program has lacked sufficiently. Uh, I have two daughters who have played Penfield Little League, my oldest, starting seven, eight years ago. And we've always paid the same dues as the boys. In eight years, there's been no upgrades to the facilities, no changes to anything. And I'm constantly answering you know, questions from my daughters. Well, why did the boys get this and we don't? Why did the boys have fencing? Why did the boys have a bathroom? Why did the boys have a concession stand? And my husband and I took it upon ourselves to set, set this right for the girls. Um, we have to do better as a community um, for everyone in the community. And that's kind of why I'm here right now. Okay, so looking at the layout right now, yes. it looks like there was something kind of thrown out on the table about the layout of that middle field. Are, yes. Are you supportive? Were you saying that you wanted to remove uh, it? I'm not saying I. I'm, I'm not saying I want anything at this point. I I am I stand fully with Kelly. I okay. want I want equality. Okay. And I want to see. Action. I want to see. I want to see three fences. Three. I right. want to see three fields, three fences, full bathroom, full concession stand. I, I want to see all of that. I'm also trying to be realistic. And if, mm -hmm. so, I was proposing other. If there's something that needs to be eliminated, that one could be eliminated because there is a workaround. I could also speak. Uh, enrollment is dropping for Penfield Little League on the baseball side also. So there's there there are going to be more opportunities. I think to move some softball games because that's what the problem we've had in the last few years there's no practice time we those games are full both fields are full monday tuesday wednesday thursday friday is generally an off night we hold for rainouts saturday we start at 9 a.m and we're going usually until 3 or 4 p.m and both fields are in use so if we're going to talk about safety young girls health and uh, you learn a game and by by practicing you don't learn it by playing the game you need to practice so we as it stands right now have no time to practice where people so you really need that field we we need something over there i don't i'm saying i don't know that it needs to be a fully fenced in 200 foot field i think it could potentially bump out and we use it for our smaller kids our rookies program which you could put like these these middle fields over here that have a fence that's 100 150 125 feet out we could use that for our smallest kids. So I just think there are a lot of, there are a lot of options, um, but I don't want to get hung up on that when I think putting fences around those two fields is something that's relatively cheap and actionable, potentially before our season starts at the end of April. Uh, I would just add that, I, you know, it, it's a big- Do you introduce yourself, oh, sorry, please? Yeah. Uh, Dan Aiken. Thanks. Um, uh, so, I think when we looked at this, we didn't expect all of this to happen in a month or two months or a year's time, right? This, mm -hmm. is, this is something that needs to be planned out, but I don't think that's a reason to take shortcuts or start eliminating things off the bat. So um, I think it's pretty straightforward to come up with a list of priorities and budget for those priorities. It sounds like with uh, um, your support and, and Tony's support, we actually have a grant that covers a good portion of, of the bathroom, which I would think would be the number one priority, so we can get folks out of the porta potty that's there today. Um, you know, and then if you start looking at uh, you know pedestrian safety and the need for additional parking, and then ultimately maybe we work that third field in down the road. But it seems like there needs to be you know things phased in from a budgeting standpoint, anyways. Mm -hmm. So. Um, Right. You know, I, I, this this is a uh, a culmination of the feedback that we've received from hundreds of petitions um, that we've put together and submitted to the town. So I'd hate to see any of it eliminated. I do agree with Dan on you know setting the priorities and what's really ultimately needed for for all the fields. So I don't know that we need to make that decision right now. Really, what we want to do is just say we want to go forward and keep. And that, that's what it seems like to me, project. right? Support for a master plan of the software, softball facilities and then figure out a way to phase these improvements in. Right. No. It, sounds, it sounds similar to the last 
the last um, it is. <laughs> item because, you know, you, um, Mark wants to make sure he can get all the utilities, whatever, if he knows the restroom, we're agreeable to the restroom, we're getting money for the restroom, well, might as well plan for the restroom, right, and get it mm -hmm. going and, and plan for where you want to lay out the fields. And, you know, the third one, that could be at the end of it all, maybe, you know, but uh, we know how important it is to get the, get the, the two fields up to par with the others. And, and safety for the pedestrians and the parents and so on that are going to be there. Agreed. You know, we talked about this before. We all agreed right. last last board that it was a it's a priority that we want to see this yep. happen. That we right. want to see the that you that the w women have the same facilities exactly as the men in softball. Um, Bob or Candace, do you have any other anything to add? No. Nope. Okay. Okay. So I think you're hearing general agreement from the board that we want to move forward with okay. the next steps. Okay. Okay. And I believe that concludes our action items, correct? Thank you all for Thank your support. You. Thank you Thank very you much. Very welcome. I'm sorry we didn't move you up to the front. Oh, that's okay. That's okay. All right. Um, we have um, no old business. Is there any new business before the town board? Okay, uh, I'd like to thank PCTV and Greg for their support for this evening, and I'd like to make a motion to adjourn at 8.35 p.m. Is there, oh, are we all in favor? Oh, yes, all in favor. Okay, great. <laughs>